science has led to some incredible discoveries. Science is the bedrock upon which all human progression is built, but that doesn't mean things can't go wrong from time to time, sometimes very much so. These are 20 science experiments that went wrong. Number 20. Russian Sleep Experiment all I have to say is, a secret experiment in a covert Soviet test facility, and I feel confident that you're all desperate to hear more. Yes, we're about to talk about a top-secret, off-the-book experiment that was, uh, well, uh, messy. In the late 1940s, a military-sanctioned science experiment was ongoing in a covert test facility. Five political prisoners were held in a sealed gas chamber with an airborne stimulant administered constantly to keep the subjects awake for 30 consecutive days. As for the subjects, they were falsely promised that they would be freed from prison prison should they complete the experiment. And, as expected, the experiment was insane. When science experiments go wrong, everything was fine for the first few days, though the conversation did quickly get into darker territory. After nine days, one subject started screaming uncontrollably for hours, and nobody reacted. He screamed for so long that, eventually, his vocal cords tore, rendering him mute. When a second subject started screaming, the others covered the windows with poop and book pages. Days later, the researchers turned off the stimulating gas and opened up the chamber, only to find that the surviving members had severely mutilated themselves, resulting in four inches of blood. Amazingly, all of the surviving subjects were shown to exhibit extreme strength and the ability to survive lethal wounds. However, if they slept, well, they would die. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, Biosphere 2. Welcome to New Earth, or as it's also known, Arizona. Here in the middle of the arid desert, a group of geniuses or delusional creatives, depending on your perspective, gathered to build this giant greenhouse. Or, if you will, a sphere of life, which is uh, not spherical. Thanks to a Texas billionaire who seems to have more money than sense, John Allen and Margaret Augustine were able to create this impressive experiment. For the low, low sum of $200 million, the experiment is an effort to demonstrate that space colonization is possible. By recreating the Earth's ecological systems inside an artificial habitat, the creators argue that it conclusively proves we could indeed live on other planets and maybe even rebuild the Earth we live on. Is it madness or is it genius? Well, that's all a matter of perspective. I'm still kinda stuck on the $200 million thing. Two missions have taken place within these buildings. The first lasted two years and actually disproved the initial experiment as oxygen was being imported in from outside of the greenhouse, almost killing those inside. The second lasted just six months after the billionaire fired one of the initial creators. The crew rebelled, vandalizing the place. All this proves is that humans should not be trusted, which I think we all kinda knew anyway. Number 18. Monster Study we're traveling back in time to 1939 now, to Davenport, Iowa. Wendell Johnson has come up with a curious experiment that will focus in on the unfortunate condition of stuttering. The only problem, he's going to use orphan children as his test subjects. Yeah, yeah. The children in question were not made aware of the reason behind the research, and all of them were under the impression that they were to receive speech therapy. Instead, Wendell Wendell wanted to see if he could induce stuttering in healthy children. As soon as word got out that Wendell would be conducting this experiment on orphan children, the project got the unfortunate but fitting name of the Monster Study. Wendell and his crew would give half of the children positive speech therapy, praising their fluency, while the other half would get negative speech therapy, in which they were belittled for imperfections. The children who received the negative therapy suffered 
suffered severe psychological effects, and their speech problems remained for the rest of their lives. The experiment proved so controversial that it was eventually kept hidden because of the damage that could have been done to Wendell's reputation, but not because of what he did to these children, of course. No, no, because of similar health experiments conducted by the Nazis in World War II, it's hard to find the most despicable part of this story, isn't it? Number 17. Rykelt's Aviator Suit It's really a shame that more people are not familiar with Franz Reichelt. The guy was kind of the Tom Cruise of his day. This is to say that he had insane confidence that he would somehow just never ever die. Back in the 1900s, Reichelt created a parachute out of 320 square feet of fabric, which would fold up into a wearable aviator suit. Unfortunately for Reichelt, all of his tests had disappointed. Every single dummy that he'd thrown ended up splattered on the ground below. It just didn't seem to work. Reichelt, of course, said that his product product worked fine. The problem was that the buildings just weren't tall enough. So in 1912, Reichelt took his product and a dummy to the top of the Eiffel Tower. But imagine the shock from the onlookers when it became clear that it wouldn't be the dummy that leapt from the tower. No, no, Reichelt strapped on his own suit and jumped. But of course, the parachute didn't open. Reichelt died upon impact, conclusively proving that the size of the building didn't really matter at all. Unless the Eiffel Tower was also a little too short. Either way, you have to admire the courage of the guy. Not many people would commit to their own product in such a way. Number 16. Yellow Fever Experiment Stubbins Firth was not just a man with possibly the greatest name in history, he was also an insane man that attempted to prove his theories correct the only way he knew how, to infect himself and say, see, I told you. In this case, however, Firth was doomed from the start. He had concluded that yellow fever was not a contagious disease. Citing the drop in cases during winter, Firth believed that the disease was probably just a result of heat in the summer. That of course is not correct, but we'll go with that. To prove his theories, Firth first attempted to come into direct contact with the bodily fluids of those that had become infected with yellow fever. I'm going to spare you the genuine disgusting details, but just know that he used pretty much every single bodily fluid you can imagine and put them in some truly horrible places. And yet he never caught the disease. Firth took this as conclusive proof that the yellow fever was not contagious. However, it would later be revealed that Firth had used samples from late-stage patients no longer contaminated with the virus. Almost six decades after his death, Cuban scientist Carlos Finlay discovered that the virus was spread by mosquitoes carrying the virus, which means Firth spent a disturbingly long time covering himself in puke and pee for nothing. What a legacy. Number 15. Tusco Elephants are generally known as wise and relatively calm animals, but don't be fooled. These animals can be just as hostile and angry if they feel it, especially during their mating season. In fact, they even have a name for it. Must. During the mating season, elephants exhibit an unusual and unique behavior called must, characterized by the apparently random episode of wild, erratic, destructive rage. characterized by an apparently random episode of wild, erratic, destructive rage. In the 1960s, scientists in India decided they wanted to do an experiment that would help them understand must more and possibly figure out how to control it. But how do you actually induce a must-like state in an elephant? Well, these scientists thought LSD would do it. Yeah, they actually gave a 14-year-old Indian elephant named Tusco an injection of LSD. Can you guess what happened next? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you already know. Obviously, Tusco just kneeled over and started having seizures, overdosed on LSD. 
What a shock, right? The scientists tried to counter the drug with promazine, an antipsychotic drug. The seizure stopped, but Tusco died within a matter of minutes. They had killed an elephant with drugs. See, friends, this is conclusive proof that a degree doesn't make you any smarter than the people around you. Number 14. Winthrop Kellogg the arrival of a new baby boy is a happy occasion, of course. It's a celebration of life, really. A chance to develop a brand new human to be the best that they could possibly be. Or if you're a psychologist, it's the chance to experiment. In the 1930s, comparative psychologist Winthrop Kellogg and his wife welcomed Donald a healthy baby boy. Over the past few years, Kellogg had grown obsessively fascinated with the stories of children who were raised by wolves in the woods. Feral children. But rest assured, Winthrop didn't send his kid out into the woods. No, he just adopted a similar aged baby chimp named Gua and raised them together. Kellogg wanted to see if an ape could be raised like a human and possibly pick up some of our behavioral antics. Initially, Gua did much better than Donald in many of the tests. However, she eventually started to plateau, leading the experiment to a pretty anticlimactic end. Gua did not, in fact, learn to behave more like a human. And since Gua could not speak English, Donald began picking up some of his adoptive sister's speaking vocalizations. As a result, the Kelloggs mutually agreed to get rid of the monkey, if only to prevent their son from, you know, flinging his poop. Number 13. Guatemala Syphilis Experiments Welcome to 1940s Guatemala. Home of uh, syphilis? That can't be right. Oh, but it is. And as always, it had absolutely nothing to do with the people of Guatemala, but one insane physician who decided to do his experiment, you guessed it, without anybody's consent, US physician John Charles Cutler actually had something of a history with syphilis. He had also participated in the late stages of the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Inspired by the results of that experiment, Cutler headed to Guatemala and set to work, infecting soldiers, sex workers, prisoners, and mental patients with syphilis and other sexually transmitted diseases. And they did not even know. Before long, Cutler had created an epidemic throughout the country that would eventually see 83 people lose their lives. In fact, while the experiments lasted between 1946 and 1948, the STDs were still being picked up in blood tests in 1953. Guatemala understandably didn't react well when the experiment finally came to light. They called the experiment a crime against humanity and filed a lawsuit against the United States. In 2010, then-President Barack Obama, Secretary of State and Secretary of Health and Human Services, made a full formal apology to the country for the ethical violations. I mean, why would you? If you give someone an STD and drop an I'm sorry text 70 years later, you're probably not gonna get a thumbs up. Number 12. The Milgram Shock Experiment In the world of scientific experimentation, it seems like ethics are optional. They're not, of course, but many scientific professionals seem to just conveniently ignore that in favor of doing whatever the hell they feel like and sometimes that can lead to great controversy. In July 1961, in the basement of Lindsley Chittenden Hall at Yale University, psychologist Stanley Milgram began his latest experiment. He wanted to investigate the willingness of a group to obey an authority figure who instructed them to perform acts conflicting with their own conscience. The experiment saw them administering electric shocks to a learner from varying levels, from minor to eventual, potentially fatal levels of electricity. Of course, the shocks were all fake. The psychologists didn't want to hurt anyone. They were actually just trying to answer the question of whether the Nazis who were facing trial for war crimes 
truly were just following orders. The conclusion of the experiment showed that a surprisingly high proportion of subjects obeyed the instructions, despite their own reluctance. It's a depressing look into the human mind, but, uh, well, isn't every experiment ultimately just a very depressing look at human existence when you think about it? Number 11. Challenger Disaster some of you will claim that a space launch does not count as an experiment, and to you I would say, why not? We live on Earth. I'm sure that anything sent to space counts as a new development. Therefore, experiment. On January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger launched. The plan was to deploy a communication satellite and study Halley's Comet while in orbit. That never happened, of course, because the Challenger broke apart just 73 seconds into its flight, killing all seven crew members on board. Two redundant O-ring seals in the space shuttle's right solid rocket booster had failed, causing a breach just after liftoff. The pressurized gas within the booster burned through the wall to the fuel tank and blew the whole thing up. The disaster all came down to simple, faulty engineering, and even worse, the whole world saw it live. The incident was broadcast live to the entire planet, making a very dark day for the people at NASA. The incident was so devastating that NASA instituted a 32-month hiatus in the space shuttle program altogether. Even today, the Challenger disaster is often referred to as one of the worst days in NASA history. It's easy to see why. Number 10. Stanford Prison Experiment Arguably one of the most failed experiments, the Stanford Prison Experiment is a masterclass in disaster. It's also a pretty depressing look at humanity in general and how our species tends to get corrupted by power. Let's dig in, shall we? In 1971, the U.S. Office of Naval Research gave Philip Zimbardo money to make the experiment a reality. The point of the experiment was to prove that situations and circumstances dictate how a person acts, as opposed to their personalities. Twenty-four young men were assigned the roles of a prison guard or inmate. Each was paid $15 per day for the two-week experiment. The prisoners were held in a fake prison, made to wear a uniform with chains around their ankles. By the next day, those prisoners had revolted and, over the next few days, some were so traumatized they wanted out. The guards, meanwhile, had gotten drunk on power and began to relish their roles with sadistic glee. When an outside observer witnessed the horrific and upsetting events happening within, they sounded the alarm and forced the experiment to come to an end after just six days. Experts believe it could never be replicated today due to ethical standards. But Zimbardo has always defended his experiment, claiming no rules were broken and everything was just fine. Sure, buddy. Number 9. Unit 731 World War II was obviously one of the worst tragedies to ever hit our planet. Nobody can ever claim otherwise. But for all that we know about the genocide and human abuse that was going on worldwide, there's one atrocity very few know about. Unit 731. Unit 731 was the name of a Japanese biological warfare unit that somehow managed to delve deeper into the moral cesspit of a genocidal war. Initially, Unit 731 was used as a research and public health agency, but it turned into a biological warfare division during the war responsible for developing weaponized diseases that could kill everyone on Earth if released. And how did they develop those weapons? You guessed it. They held prisoners hostage and used them as test subjects and walking incubators for world-ending disasters. These experiments included submerging prisoners into ice water until they suffered hypothermia, mutilating prisoners without anesthesia to study organs, using prisoners' bodies to test weapons and other methods of death, infecting people with syphilis, and even forcibly impregnating female prisoners to perform experiments on them. 
If all of this is not bad enough, we haven't even mentioned the thousands of people who were killed testing biological weapons. Only after 1945, when Hiroshima and Nagasaki had been bombed, the Japanese army destroyed, and the Emperor surrendered, did Unit 731 finally disband. To this day, Japan has not apologized for its atrocities, and likely never will. Number 8. The Michelson-Morley Experiment In the late 1800s, scientists firmly believed that ether, a substance that carried light waves, was motionless. They thought that the motion of Earth through space would alter the speed of light depending on which direction you faced. If this is heady stuff, yeah, it is, but it led to a much bigger discovery. The theory I just mentioned was known as ether wind, and it was essentially about asking if the speed of light would change depending on where you faced. To test the theory, Albert Michelson, a scientist, invented a device that could theoretically measure changes to the speed of light. His device, when he had tested it, was totally accurate. But when it didn't detect any changes to the speed of light, Michelson didn't even consider the thought that there was no change. He just assumed the experiment had failed. What a mistake. Decades later, Einstein came along and made the great discovery that the speed of light is a universal constant. Of course, it wouldn't change depending on which direction you faced. Their total failure to discover something led Einstein to become one of the great geniuses of our time. Unlucky boys. Number 7. Serge Voronoff's Monkey Testes since the earliest days of our existence, humans have been concerned about aging. There's something terrifying about the thought of getting older and eventually just not existing, right? Well, as it turns out, plastic surgery has also been around for quite a long time. It just focused elsewhere. In his time, Dr. Serge Voronoff was known as the monkey gland expert, and it was his genuine belief that human aging could be halted or even reversed by transplanting monkey testicles into humans. That wasn't one of his craziest ideas, by the way. After a series of failures, Voronov concluded that the only way to reap the benefits of ageless animals were to graft tissue into humans. Realizing that monkeys shared the same kind of similarities with humans, Voronov implanted a chump's thyroid gland into a so-called French idiot in 1915 and claimed that his mental faculties had improved. Five years later, Voronov was moving on to a different kind of surgery, transplanting monkey testes into human testes. He believed this would prolong human life and return youthful energy to even the oldest men. Between 1920 and 1940, Voronov performed some 2,000 testicle rejuvenations. Say what you will about the guy, but he had some balls. Number 6. PGN-1412 In 2006, Rob Oldfield thought he was doing a great thing when he signed up for a drugs trial at Northwick Park Hospital. Not only would he make a little extra cash, but he would also be helping the evolution of medical science. Well, guess again. In March, Oldfield joined seven other subjects to take part in the first human trial of TGN-1412, a drug said to manipulate the immune system. The company behind the drug hoped that it would revolutionize the treatment of leukemia and arthritis, but within minutes of the drug entering the system, all of the subjects fell violently unwell. By midnight, Rob was in intensive care. The drug caused all subjects to experience multiple organ failures and plummeting blood pressure. Somehow, after three weeks in hospital and a lot of care, Rob and others managed to survive. However, the effects were long-lasting. His short-term memory was damaged, his immune system weakened, but Rob was lucky. The other men experienced severe swelling of the head, some of them having their toes and fingers fingers amputated. Rob got out unscathed, but understandably he has no interest in ever taking part in another trial. And who can blame him? Number 5. See-Through Frog 
Don't even bother asking me why people wanted this because, well, I have absolutely no idea. But yes, scientists have successfully created the world's first see-through frog, so those of you who did want this, well, you can rest easy knowing your dream has come true. The scientists used the natural color mutants from the Japanese brown frog, Rana japonica. Those curious colorations allow the organs, blood vessels, and eggs to be seen through through the skin without the need for dissection. So, yes, if you ever wanted to look at the inside of a frog without having to kill the poor thing, all you have to do was to get the Rana Japonica and do a little experimenting. I mean, it's so simple, I don't even know what the heck we were thinking doing anything else. You know, maybe all science is this simple. Maybe I could be a scientist. No, no. I must continue to bless the world with the sound of my voice. Anyway, yeah, there is now a see-through frog in the world, and scientists all over the planet see it as a good thing. They can now use the creature for environmental, medical, and biological research. But could they provide this soothing, calm voice for a YouTube video? I don't think so. Number 4. New Coke I feel confident enough to assume that most of the people watching this video won't know New Coke whatsoever, and if you do, it's probably based on the Simpsons joke. Well, I'm about to tell you about one of the world's most poorly thought out new products. In 1985, the Coca-Cola company were dismayed to find that blind taste tests had suggested consumers preferred the slightly sweeter taste of Pepsi-Cola, so they decided to make a whole new formula for their product, thereby protecting their business. Fair, right? Well, it was not successful. Once New Coke came out, the backlash was intense, with the public demanding their old, familiar Coca-Cola. It was considered one of the worst product launches in history. Within three months, the company was forced to go back to the old recipe, and wouldn't you think it, they got a huge sales boost. Clinics around the world suggested that the whole thing had been an elaborate marketing ploy to boost sales. But come on, their sales plummeted for three months, the boost probably just evened the scales a little. Either way, new Coke or old Coke, it could still dissolve rust from a coin, so sure. Number 3. David Raymer Full warning that this story could be triggering for some people. We're going to talk about the case of David Raymer, a man who was castlit into believing he was a woman. It's not a particularly nice story, but it's an important one. When he was an infant, David Raymer's genitals were severely injured during a botched circumcision. John Money, a psychologist, gave his parents the truly horrifying advice to raise their son as a girl. He believed wrongly that gender identity is primarily rarely learned and not something that is known to us humans. It wasn't until the age of between 9 and 11 years old that Raymer fully realized he was not a girl. By 15, he had fully transitioned into living life as a man, but the knowledge that a psychiatrist had essentially tried to condition him into changing his gender left its wounds. Raymer eventually went public with his story after the case was anonymously discussed in quiet circles. He wanted to discourage the damaging medical practice that destroyed his life and stole his childhood. Openly dismissing Money's claim that gender identity is learned, Raymer would eventually kill himself after suffering severe depression, likely a result of the trauma caused by Money and his horrific experiment. Number 2. Mick Broccoli how do you get kids to eat their veggies? Parents have been seeking an answer for years. Well, in 2014, McDonald's did their best to come up with a solution. The only problem, it was one of the worst possible solutions they could have come up with. Seriously. As the 2010s slowly moved along, McDonald's realized that this whole healthy eating thing was catching steam. And if they offered some tasty and nutritious products, they might be able to reach a whole new sector of consumer, so they started experimenting with different flavors and vegetables and eventually conceived a vegetable kids would love to eat. Bubblegum flavored broccoli. Yeah. 
Does that not sound like one of the most revolting things you've ever heard of in your life? Well, it turns out that everybody in the test groups reached the same conclusion. The McDonald's CEO later said that the effort was a total disaster, with many kids confused by the taste. It did not taste good, and in fact, kids were confused by the conflicting tastes of both broccoli and bubblegum. Who would have thought that these two things would never mix? It's like making chocolate-flavored chicken. Why? I'm just surprised McDonald's called the whole thing off. Number 1. Mavain it's 1856, and malaria continues to be a significant and seemingly unsolvable problem. But rest assured, some of the world's greatest minds are on track to resolve it. One of those minds is William Henry Perkin, a genius scientist who may be on the cusp of brilliance. Just not in the way he thinks. Perkin attempted to produce quinine, a chemical designed to help treat malaria. But instead of quinine, Perkin's beakers were filled with a dirty brown sludge. Naturally, he grabbed some alcohol and attempted to clear the stuff out, but when he poured the alcohol inside, the sludge became a bright, rich fuchsia purple dye. Yes, Perkin had created the world's first synthetic dye, completely by accident. He called the dye Mavane, and decades later, his legacy continues on, with history recognizing him as the world's first person to discover a synthetic dye. Before this, dyes and pigments had had to be sourced from plants, metals, minerals. It was all very costly. What Perkin had done was proof that you could manufacture the very same thing with minimal cost and effort. And history has thanked him for finding a way for all of us to cut corners. What an absolute genius, this guy. Have you ever taken part in an experiment gone wrong? Or maybe you know of a terrible experiment we didn't highlight? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.